So, Halloween is right around the corner, so I may as well talk about this little deep cut game called Devil World. Released in 1984 for the family computer system, also known as the Nintendo Entertainment System, also known as the Famicom, also known as the NES. And to be honest, this is a game I didn't even know existed until I uh, I was just scrolling through the Nintendo Switch Online NES library, and I looked up, and the first de uh, the first game that was listed, uh, if you have the game sorted out by release date, was this game, which is apparently the first uh, the first Famicom game ever released, the first NES game to ever be released, at least the first game. Uh, developed for the system created by Shigeru Miyamoto. Being a game with the title that it has, I was very curious and I wanted to check it out, so that's how I ended up making this video. The game takes place in Devil World, which is being run by, if you can guess, the Devil. You play as a heroic dragon named Tamagon who must defeat evil by navigating a maze with multiple types of challenges, including collecting boa boa dots and destroying enemies with fire breath. If you're looking at the game already and can tell that it looks very similar to another maze game that I already talked about on my channel before, you'd probably be right. That would, be, that would probably be your very first impression of the game, just like it was mine. However, even though this is a maze game, it does have its own mechanics. Mechanics that would have this game banned by Nintendo of America for almost 40 years, which is actually how old this game is now. Each maze has three phases. In the first phase, you collect dots, but in order to collect the dots, you have to first grab a cross. By collecting a cross, you can now collect the dots. But not only that, you also get fire breath, which allows you to defend yourself against the devil's henchmen. By shooting these enemies with fire breath, it turns them into... I'm not really sure what they are. They look like eyeballs. Tamagon can eat them, which can be a good way to get rid of them for a short period of time. Otherwise, the fire breath acts as some sort of enemy stun. By the way, a cross loses its power after a short period of time, and once you lose that cross, you have to go grab another one in order to complete the maze. Otherwise, you won't be able to grab the dots. And one thing I will say about collecting crosses, the game does tell you when uh, the cross is flashing that your power is about to run out. That should be an opportunity for you to just go ahead and grab the cross that you're right next to. So that way, you won't have to worry about losing it. You can just grab it right then and there, but that's not how that works. You hold one, you hold it until it disappears, and you can't grab one until it disappears. Which is, uh, which sucks. I should just be able to grab another one if, if it's about to disappear, but I can't do that. And I'll explain in more detail why this is a bigger problem once I start talking about the maze itself. So after you finish collecting all the dots from phase one, then begins phase two, where you have to collect Bibles. There's a red skull block with four sides open on it, and you have to collect Bibles in order to close them. While you are navigating the Bible towards the red skull blocks, you can actually defend yourself infinitely with the Bible in hand. Which means that as long as you have a Bible in hand, you can always shoot fireballs. One thing to keep in mind is that you're vulnerable as long as you don't have a Bible. What's interesting is that there's actually different scriptures in the Bible that talks about how God's breath is described as setting coals on fire and flames shooting from the mouth. Job 41 verse 21. Once all four Bibles are collected and put into the red skull block, the devil loses all of his power and he flees from the maze. Phase 3 is called the bonus box, but I'll talk about that in a minute. I need to talk about the devil's powers. Because I talked about all of this and I didn't even bring up what the devil can do. He stands on top of the screen and controls the camera. His minions at the bottom of the screen, on the left and the right, 
will spin the wheels in the direction that the devil is pointing in. For example, if the devil is pointing to the left, the minions will spin the wheels to the left and the camera will pan to the right. This information applies to vertical scrolling as well. So this means a couple of things. For one, certain dots and crosses will be out of reach as long as the devil has control over the camera. Two, this means that you can end up being crushed by the outer walls. If you happen to be at the top corner of the screen and the devil is pointing up, the screen will pan downwards and you will end up getting crushed. The Bibles will stay in frame whether you can reach them or not. It's really a matter of patience with the RNG whether you, or whether you succeed or fail. But playing this game has made me curious if there's any way to possibly manipulate the RNG. Even though the devil has control over the world and the camera, I wonder if he's manipulated by RNG or influenced by it to point in a specific direction. So let's talk about the bonus maze, or as it's referred to as the bonus box. There are six question mark boxes in frame. Depending on which box you grab depends on how many points you get. Not only that, but there's a secret 1-up box somewhere in the maze that you have to collect. Collecting all of the secret boxes is not necessarily the goal. The goal is trying to find that secret 1-up box, which you only have 30 seconds to find. I almost forgot that you can step on these random arrows in the middle of the maze to change the panning of the camera. Excuse me, not almost forgot, almost forgot to mention. Which, by the way, you can also end up getting crushed if you don't play the bonus level properly. You won't lose a life, but you will lose a chance of collecting extra points and finding an extra life. And you do these three different phases over and over again with each round. And of course, the game gets more and more difficult the further you go. I didn't play this game very long. I pretty much stopped after round two the first time I played it. But I played the game again and I got to round three and I noticed that the game was getting faster. Tomagon was getting faster and the camera panning was getting faster. The cross would lose its power faster. And of course the usual new enemy variants. I played the game until I got to around 10 and then I was pretty much satisfied with the game after that. So I don't think I need to tell anybody that's watching this video why this game was banned from the US. Never to be released until literally October 31st of last year, last Halloween. It took 39 years for this game to get a US release. Europe got their hands on this game back in 1987. The game has seen a history of virtual console releases, but never in the US. Not even the Japanese version made it to the US in virtual console form. And I'm pretty sure I don't have to tell anybody that's watching this video that the reason why this game was never released in the US is because of the religious imagery and icons that were used in the game. Because Nintendo of America has a pretty strict policy against stuff like that. I don't know if that's still an active thing going on in 2024, but that was definitely a thing back in 1984. Other YouTubers that have talked about this game before have referred to it as Satanic Pac-Man. But if you ask me, this is probably the most biblical game I've ever played in my life. This game takes the concept of I have the power of God and anime on my side and completely runs with it. I wonder how that kid's doing. He probably doesn't even know that this game exists, but he should try it out. Uh, but yeah, I, I do like this game. I like how you're playing as this little dragon and you're facing off against the devil and you're going in with it with the power of God. You can't you can't uh, fight this guy. You can't uh, fight in his world without the power of God by his side. And that's actually pretty cool. I'm not even sure if they designed this game to be biblical or not. It probably isn't considering that 1% of Japan is Christian. My guess is that this game is actually unwittingly biblical and not intentionally biblical.
But whatever the case may be, it's a pretty cool concept. One more thing I will say about the game is that I mentioned earlier in, in, in the beginning of the video that I actually never heard of this game before. But that's not 100% true. I did sort of hear about this game, but I never looked into it. As a matter of fact, when I first started playing this game, I immediately remembered Super Smash Bros. Brawl and how the devil was an assist trophy in that game. And I remember him being one of the most annoying assist trophies in the game. Because just like in Devil World, the devil can take control of the camera in the Super Smash Bros. arena and move it all over the place and can KO somebody out of bounds due to the panning of the camera. If you get knocked off stage, you're in even more danger than you were before. To be honest, I don't even think it really mattered who got the assist trophy first. Other than that, that's really all I have to say about this game. There's my Halloween special of the year, I guess. So with that, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, have a blessed day. And if you celebrate it, happy Halloween.